Welcome to the first part of our beginner's guide to using Blender for visual effects compositing. Today's subject, an introduction to node-based compositing. Hello Film Worlders, I am your host Micah Pendleton and welcome to Premiere Prep. Thank you very much for joining me in our first part in our Blender Visual Effects Compositing series. This is going to be awesome and I think for anybody who wants to learn visual effects in Blender, this series is going to be a great starting point. We're going to be covering green screening, masking, working with CG, working with the color tools, and way more. So let's begin at the starting line. What is node-based compositing? Node-based compositing is actually the number one form of compositing for visual effects used in Hollywood. Many in-house software uses it, Nuke, Natron, and of course Blender, and more, all use node-based compositing. The other form which is quite popular is layer-based compositing, which is used in After Effects, Motion, and hit film. The basic definition of node-based compositing, according to Wikipedia, is useless. That's really all I could find on Wikipedia, so I'll have to explain this to you in my own words. Node-based compositing is a modular and linear form of compositing. It's comprised of the modules, nodes, which are linked together in a linear fashion down to the final result. Fun fact for you, node-based compositing was added to Blender back in 2012 with version 2.64. Now that that dictionary mumbo jumbo stuff is out of the way, let's see how to work with it in Blender. To get to the compositor, open up Blender and from the default screen, go to the editor type menu and select node editor and change the mode to compositing. And after you enable nodes, you're ready to go. This whole area is what I like to call the node workspace. That's not an official name, that's just what I call it. And these are your nodes. These are what actually make changes. And this linking them is the node strand. The render layers node is for if you're working with CGI or another scene. We don't need this, so we can get rid of it by pressing X. To add video footage, just drag and drop it from your file manager. You will notice on this node, you'll have only one frame of your video. You'll need to input the correct number of frames. Unless there's just one frame, but that would be kind of stupid. So now you may want a viewer so you can actually see what you're doing. So click backdrop to enable the backdrop. But you may be like, oh no, I did something wrong. Why can't I see anything? No worries, you wouldn't be the first. You need to add a viewer node. Press Control shift and left click on a node and boom, the viewer node. You may also need to resize the backdrop, so press N to bring up the right properties panel, and under backdrop, you can zoom it in or out, or even move it around. Once I've added the viewer node, I see no reason to fiddle with a composite node until I'm all done. So don't delete it, but do disconnect it and just move it to the side. To disconnect it, hit Control left click and drag across the node strand. Now let's add a modifying node. Press Shift A to open the node menu. For this example, I'll be going down to color and adding a hue saturation value node. Hover over the node strand until it turns orange, then release. And as you can see, the values are right on the node. I'll now tweak these factors till I have what I want, then add an RGB curves node and change some of its values. Now watch this. This is a very important thing to understand with node-based compositing. Here I have those two nodes and they give me the result you see here but watch when I reverse the order. You can get a much different result. It's the same nodes, but you get a much different result when the order is changed. So keep in mind that the order in which you place the nodes is very important, because node-based compositing is a linear system. At this point, we've worked with the interface a little bit, added a few nodes, made some changes, and you should be a little bit more comfortable with the workflow. Now I want to list some keyboard shortcuts for you. You can also find this list in the description. Shift A brings up the node menu so you can add new nodes. T will bring up the same menu, but it's docked on the side. 
Shift D while a node is selected will duplicate the selected node. Control Shift, left click, and clicking on a node with an output will connect the node to a viewer node. X will delete the selected node, as will just pressing the delete key, but Control X allows you to delete without having to relink the node strain. Middle mouse button allows you to move around in the node editor. And the scroll wheel lets you zoom in and out. G lets you move nodes around. Control Z is undo and Control S is save. Function 12 will render the current frame and function 3 allows you to save the frame as an image. And shift plus spacebar allows you to full screen the node editor or whatever other screen you want to full size. There are more, but those are really the only ones you'll use on a regular basis. If you want to find more, you can go to the node submenu on the header and you'll see the tools and their shortcuts listed. So there you have it. That is it for part one, an introduction to node-based compositing in Blender and node-based compositing in general. In part two, we'll be going over everything you need to know when masking and rotoscoping in Blender. So be sure to check back for that next Sunday. Also, a new episode of Filmworld Community will be here this Tuesday, so make sure that you ask your questions. I'll also be announcing how you can win a giveaway. So, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. You should always dream big, but pay small. I'll catch you next time.